I want to bring in our next guest to talk about the market setup here. That is Andrew Meese. He is Six Meridian Chief Investment Officer joining us from Wichita, Kansas this morning. Andrew, um, we were just talking a few moments ago about the potential signs of froth in the market, right? You've got all uh, the IPO and SPAC boom that we have seen. We've got high flyers like Tesla and even large caps, as I was discussing earlier, like Apple up 80 percent this year. Uh, what does that tell you about kind of the, the balancing act, perhaps, that we're uh, at when we go into 2021? Sure. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. There was a, a chart I saw this morning that I thought was interesting, and it looked at the IPO volume this year compared to the previous 25 or 30 years. And this year, it's going to end up being double the previous peak. And I do think that that's a symbol of, of a, an eagerness for investors to take on risk that hasn't been present for some time. And that money has also flowed through, if you look at the trading apps and you look at the activity that we've seen in individual trading since Schwab and the others got rid of all commissions, uh, I think that was about a year ago. Uh, I, I don't think that you could question, or I don't think that there's any doubt that the speculative activity in the market is extremely high. We haven't seen anything like it probably since the late 90s. And there's a lot of these companies that have uh, have a lot of work to do to grow into the valuations that they're, they've been uh, they've been afforded so far. Andrew, how do you how you how can you successfully pick a stock in an environment where everything is going up and, and not run the risk of simply overpaying? Well, some of our clients would say I'm the wrong person to ask, given our bias towards uh, value stocks and, and dividend stocks and things like that. But I do think that you can look at um, some of the, the in, in hindsight, looking at what what trends benefited companies that could could service people who had to stay home. And you look at a lot of the large technology companies that have done well and are likely to continue to do well. But I think you also have to look at, at, at what valuation point do you say this is probably extrapolated beyond what's reasonable. And, and the example that I use for our clients oftentimes is the Apple versus Altria. And those couldn't be more different types of companies, obviously. Apple, an incredibly innovative company. The customers love it. And it's probably going to have an extremely bright future in, in, uh, going forward. And you look at Altria, who makes cigarettes, um, you know, a product that kills their customers and has very little, if any, growth. And you look at the dichotomy between how those two stocks have performed. But what we focus on is the multiples, the forward PE multiples. And Apple's forward PE multiple is the highest it's been in 10 years. Uh, for the last 10 years, you would you could make a lot of money buying it when it traded at 10 times earnings and selling it when it got to 20 times earnings. And now it's over 35 times earnings. In Altria, the same case, you know, you could uh, make money buying it at 10 times and selling it at 15, and now it's trading at eight times earnings. And so the difficulty is when do, it, when do those trends change? And, and I think that there is a, a chance that we will start to see that. And I think part of that change could come when the Fed starts to raise interest rates. And I think then that leadership inside the market could revert back to, to a value and a dividend uh, type stock uh, leadership. All right, you're looking there at live pictures uh, from the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. Got the opening bell here on this Tuesday morning. Uh, just two more after today, two more full trading sessions left in 2020, a momentous year, of course, wrapping up. And we see uh, all three majors opening at record highs after hitting a record close on Monday. So, uh, Andrew, I want to pick up on that point, that comparison you just made between um, Apple and Altria, and thinking about valuations and, and sort of what a company is for, right? You know, you talk about a, a value tilt and you'd look at, you know, price to book, price to earnings, EV to EBIT, whatever kind of metric you want to use. But, you know, we had a conversation with a guest yesterday about, you know, m maybe some of those Graham and Dodd textbook type things aren't going to really play in the, in the future. How do you kind of think about that. And certainly I would imagine you get um, questions along those lines from clients who say, hey, man, you know, like Warren Buffett's world, he did great. But that that world is kind of that's kind of come to an end. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. We hear that from from clients often who are saying, why don't we own some of the stuff that that continues to go up? And I, I go to the, the the intro to your question. What is the purpose of a company? And it's to generate earnings that are then able to be reinvested into the business or paid out to the owners. And there are a number of businesses, and, and, and it's probably getting a little tiresome for listeners to have to hear people go back to 1999 and 2000 over and over again. But I do think that there are lessons that people can learn from that period of time where companies that were formed and valued very highly never had a chance um, 
just logically, there was no chance that they could grow into that valuation because the the assumptions that were required were so extraordinary and so fantastical that it just wasn't going to happen. I think two weeks ago, Research Affiliates put out a great paper on Tesla in particular and said, here's what has to happen for Tesla to grow into its valuation. Because at the, at the end of the day, to your point, the purpose of the company or the, the valuation metrics are, do they generate cash that can be reinvested or do they have to constantly raise new capital? Or do they generate cash that can be paid out to the owners of the business? And at the end, at some point, the uh, the market is as as referencing what you said about Benjamin Graham. The market is a uh, a weighing machine in the long term and a voting machine in the short term. And that just means what's popular today can continue to go up, can continue to go higher. But at some point in time, that company has to be um, uh, an entity that generates economic return for the owners. And in the case of, of Tesla, Andrew, or some of the other high flyers like it, do you think that's going to happen? Do you think that there will be a lot of uh, perhaps disappointed investors or investors who are going to be weighing or voting on the other side uh, going into the next year? I would. Um, I, th I think yes. And I, I'm, I'm not going to give you individual names because I think that some people can get so passionate about companies they own um, that, that I don't want to stir up those passions necessarily. But there are companies that are coming public. Um, well, I'll take a great example is the SPAC, what's going on in the SPAC universe. And so these SPACs, they raise money on an IPO, and then they go and look for a business to acquire. About three weeks ago, there were three or four different SPACs that all bought uh, companies in the electric vehicle space. Do, is it likely that 10 years from now, electric vehicles are a bigger portion of the fleet that's in the United States? Absolutely. I don't think anybody questions that. But is it also true that Ford and GM and Toyota and Volkswagen are all going to try to get a piece of that? Absolutely. I think that that's, uh, that, that's known. It's going to be a very competitive space. And I think now, um, if you remember in 99, there were companies that their valuation on their stock would go up 20, 30, 40 percent just if they changed their name to something.com. And that type of irrational behavior, uh, I think you're seeing some of that in some of these pockets of the market. And it takes time for, for that to play out. And in the short term, you look pretty stupid if you're not participating. But at some point, uh, people are the bag holders and they're left and there's nobody else who's there wanting to buy it, willing to buy it from you. And at that point, the turnaround can be pretty rapid. Indeed. Yeah. Everything that says they're supplying electric vehicles these days, not just the makers of the vehicle itself, seems to be on fire. All right, Andrew, pleasure to talk to you today. Happy New Year. Hope to talk to you again in 2021. Andrew Meese there uh, joining us from Canada, Sixth Meridian Chief Investment Officer. Appreciate it.